Hi, we're here with Lynn McPherson on the campus of the University of Maryland in Baltimore at the School of Pharmacy just to talk about Lynn's book, Demystifying Opiate Conversion Calculations. Uh, Lynn, how did you come to write this book? Well, it's ironic. I think this is one of those situations where I myself was looking for a resource because uh, it's a very common clinical conundrum and I looked through the primary literature, there wasn't a whole lot there, and the idea, boy, somebody ought to write a book. And finally, I just got so fed up with the whole thing, I decided, you know what, why don't I just go ahead and do it? What, what can a, a, a buyer, a user of this book, find in your book that they're not going to find anyplace else? Well, I think that's the main point, is it pulls everything together. I mean, this is a field that, this is a skill that I think every single clinician needs to possess, and with a high degree of accuracy. And it's a tough topic. People are frightened of drug math often, um, and ironically, with drug math, you would think there would be one right answer, and unfortunately with this, it's tempered with a good deal of common sense and clinical acumen. So I think this is a resource that really pulls everything together for people, the evidence base that is available, I've pulled into here, and I've adopted a, a very much a, a show me type approach. So I explain it, I expl it's all evidence based as best as I can, and then go through several examples. And then I provide multiple practice opportunities for people. So it's written in a very conversational tone, so it's not at all scary. Hmm. What kind of comments have you gotten? What have you heard from colleagues and buyers and everything since the publication of the book? It's been very gratifying. I've been very pleased to see how well the book has been accepted. And schools of pharmacy and nursing and medicine have adopted it for electives in pain management and palliative care. Uh, people have found it to be extremely user-friendly. And uh, I'm not a beat-around-the-busher kind of person, so I've used that approach with the book. It's just tell me what I need to know, just the facts, ma'am, sort of approach. And they, so they've really liked it. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get interested in hospice and palliative care and obviously opiate dosing and all those issues surrounding uh, dosing issues? Mm -hmm. How did that begin? Well, I did a rotation as a pharmacy student in hospice. I thought it'd be a nice, easy rotation for the summer before I graduated. Sadly, I was mistaken about that, but I really did fall in love with the practice of hospice and palliative care. So I've practiced in it my entire career. Um, it's just very rewarding. It's, it's, it certainly is sad when someone is approaching the end of their life, but to relieve them of pain and to make sure they don't suffer side effects and to get them on the right opioid and to be able to accommodate the physical changes that approach the end of life where they can't swallow anymore and to still get give them uh, a good analgesic regimen that meets their needs and keeps them free of adverse effects is very rewarding. So I've really enjoyed it. Uh, got a residency. I teach in our curriculum. I teach throughout the industry at uh, a lot of meetings and so forth, and I enjoy it very much. What have you seen as far as just changes in hospice and palliative care since you've been involved in the field? Well, you know, when you think about it, the field of hospice and palliative care is still in its infancy relative to the field of internal medicine. So internal medicine is about 4,000 years old. We're probably 40 or 50 years old. But to witness the explosion of information and evidence that we have seen over recent years is just astounding. Mm -hmm. uh, and clearly we have seen this approach of evidence-based medicine. And I think the term I like best is aggressive palliative care. So it's not that we're, it's not all hearts and roses and flowers. We we take this seriously, and mm -hmm. we aggressively manage pain and other symptoms for patients. So the skill to be able to accurately and quickly and safely convert people from one opioid to a different one to meet their needs is critically important. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, we, we hear you've got a new edition uh, in the works. What kind of things uh, are you planning for the new edition? I think a couple new things. Well, certainly updating with new drugs, new opioids that have come to market, new dosage formulations, so a bit of an expansion on the use of buprenorphine, which is growing in popularity, other new opioids such as uh, Tepentadol or Nucinta, uh, even the uh, new long-acting hydromorphone product called Zohydro ER, mm -hmm. so some new long-acting products. Also, I'm including a whole chapter on the top 10 mistakes that we see mm -hmm. in opioid conversion calculations, and then just to make sure everybody avoids those 10 pitfalls, I'm going to include a competition competency assessment and of course I'll have a key so people can use it either as a self-assessment or educators can use it when they're educating other clinicians so uh, I think it's it's time for a good tune-up and including all the new drugs and I really like the element of the top 10 mistakes very good Lynn thanks for your time thank you